In my final project, I researched and am making a video about the Cuban tree frog. It is an invasive species. I'll start off with a few basic facts about the Cuban tree frog. For instance, its scientific name is Osteopilus septentrionalis. Cuban tree frogs can be white, gray, green, or brown, and can even change colors. Some Cuban tree frogs dark streaks or splotches on their backs, while others don't have a pattern and can have solid in color. Cuban tree frogs can change their color based off of temperature and environment. Their skin is rough and warty, and they range from three to six inches once fully matured, making them the largest tree frog in North America. In general, females are larger than males. The Cuban tree frog has some interesting behaviors. First off, it is nocturnal, meaning that it sleeps during the day and is active at night. During the day, Cuban tree frogs sleep above ground, usually in trees or rooftops. They are exceptional climbers like most tree frogs. Cuban tree frogs hunt and feed at night. They are able to find food and thrive in almost any environment, including forests, mangroves, coastal areas, and even areas of brackish water. Cuban tree frogs can be found anywhere from sea level to 1100 meters. Breeding and population. Males use a snorting sound to attract the female. Cuban tree frogs breed all year. However, they have a spike in breeding between May and October. Females lay eggs in patches of 100 to 1,000 eggs at a time. These eggs can hatch in under 30 hours and can even fully develop in as short as one month. Cuban tree frogs are fully mature around four to six years. Their lifetime in the wild is between 5 and 10 years. Diet and eating habits. Cuban tree frogs are carnivores. They eat pretty much anything that will fit into their mouth. This includes snails, spiders, worms, insects, snakes, lizards, small crustaceans, crickets, hatching birds, and even other tree frogs. The Cuban tree frogs have six rows of teeth, two rows located in the upper and four rows located in the lower mouth. As I said before, they hunt at night. And its wide diet and ability to thrive amongst humans has made it a highly invasive species, threatening other native species. So, what is an invasive species? An invasive species is a plant, fungus, or animal species that is not native to a specific location. These invasive species are usually introduced through humans. Invasive species have a tendency to reproduce easily and are believed to cause damage to the environment, human economy, or human health. The Cuban tree frog is native to Cuba, Bahamas, and the Cayman Islands. Currently, they are invasive in Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, the British Virgin Islands, Hawaii, and Florida. I have included a map of Florida showing the invasive species of the Cuban tree frog in mostly the southern and parts of the north. So how did the Cuban tree frog become invasive? They were able to migrate to northern lands on ships, planes, and other means of transportation provided by humans. Cuban tree frogs were also kept as pets. However, due to the toxins in their skin, they became unpleasant because they couldn't be touched. This led to people releasing them into the wild to compete against other native species. 
Human Impact on Cuban Tree Frogs Cuban tree frogs rely heavily on artificial light provided by humans to hunt insects at night. While hunting, the tree frogs occasionally climb up utility poles where they can cause short circuits and cause costly power outages. They can also invade toilets and clog drains. They are also kept as household pets because they are inexpensive. However, if more than one is kept in a tank, they can eat each other, and because of their toxic secretions, they can cause a burning sensation in the eyes and even trigger asthma. This annoying problem led to the Cuban tree frog pet owners releasing them into the environment. Why is the Cuban tree frog a threat? Well, ecological impacts can include Cuban tree frogs eat native tree frogs, lizards, and snakes, decreasing and threatening the population of the native ecosystem. They also have very few predators. These predators only include skunks, snakes, raccoons, and other Cuban tree frogs. These tree frogs have a very high reproductive rate and short generation life. Their population is able to rapidly grow due to the high productive rate and short generation life. Their population also grows because they can live in almost any shady and moist environment as well as alongside humans, which many other species can't. Invasive Species Enforcement Experts have studied and suggest that if finding a cumin tree frog to kill it with application of benzocaine ointment to their skin. After applying, you should wait 15 minutes for the frog to be fully anesthetized and then place it into the freezer for a few hours. Freezing amphibians is the most humane way to kill them. Conviction of importation of Cuban tree frogs carries a hefty and maximum fine of $25,000 as well as a year in jail. Non-native species should not be introduced to native species because chances are the non-native species will become invasive and therefore compete for food, water, and shelter with the, net, the native species. This can affect food chains and threaten endangerment or extinction of native species. With this being said, it is important to control invasive species, including the Cuban tree frog, so that they do not spread to further territories or populate too rapidly to cause serious ecological issues.